T-Rex 470 electric setup. In this video, I'm going to explain how to set up the Micro Beast Plus from beginning to end. At the end, I'll give you a very quick overview of a very helpful bonus menu as well. I'm doing it on the T-Rex 470, but the principle will apply to any helicopter. The good thing about the Micro Beast Plus is the setup can be done with just the unit and your transmitter. You can connect it to your computer or phone to give you more options and make it easier. You just need to download an app and buy a dongle and cable. I'm just doing it on the unit for now. But I've ordered the cable so I can buy and install the Rescue Bailout Mode 2 as part of the Pro Edition. Okay, first we need the manual for the Micro Beast. To get the correct manual, we need to know the correct firmware version. To know this for sure, we'll power it up and read the firmware version in binary code on the LEDs on top. To power it up, the ESC cable plugs into channel 5 and we plug the chunky 6S battery into the ESC. Before I do that, I'll unplug the motor wires and disconnect the server wires making sure I label the server wires correctly as it powers up all the lights turn on then it shows the firmware version at the top on the LEDs in binary code mine looks like this which is version 5.1 there's one small problem when I go to the Beastex website to download it there's no manual for 5.1 there's 5.0 and 5.2 they also say only for those versions too so I emailed Beastex and said what's going on guys fortunately this lovely guy Stefan replied saying don't worry just use 5.0 it's basically the same so that's what I'm going to do. So the basic operation and setup of the Micro Beast Plus goes like this. There are 14 settings, each represented by an LED labelled A to N. You switch between each of these settings with the button, and the status of the setting is shown by the status LED. You change the setting itself using the sticks on your transmitter. It will be clearer in a minute looking at each step. First up, mounting it on your heli. The servo ports must point directly backwards or forwards and the white port on the side must be aligned with the longitudinal axis of the helicopter. So there's eight possible orientations. Just use your sticky pads and mount it in one of these ways. We'll get to setting the orientation in the settings in a minute. Next up, connecting your receiver. There are different ways of doing this depending on your setup. I'm just talking about using one satellite here as that's what I did. If you want to know about the others, check the manual, I've put links in the description. So it's dead easy with just a satellite, it just plugs into the white port on the side. You'll notice the white port is twice the size of the plug. Plug it into the side nearest the servo ports. Then the ESC cable plugs into channel 5. This will both power the microbeast and satellite, and send data to the ESC to control the motor. I'm not using a separate BEC, so don't worry about that cable. Now it's time to set up your transmitter. This is pretty straightforward, just follow these basic steps as shown in the manual. Add a new model, give it a name, click on helicopter, unless you're using it on something else of course. Set a swash plate type to normal, set your flight mode and throttle hold switches. In the manual it says G and A, but you set them to whatever you want. I prefer flight mode on switch B and hold mode on switch H. Set a linear pitch curve for now from 0 to 100 or minus 100 to plus 100 depending on your transmitter type. And make sure there's no channel mixing in your transmitter. So each control only controls one channel. Collective should only control collective pitch when throttle hold is on of course. Elevator only controls elevator, aileron only controls aileron and rudder only controls rudder. Also ensure all servo travels are set to 100 and all trims and sub trims are set to zero. Now you've set up your transmitter, you can bind it. This is how to do it with a single spectrum satellite. First, put the bind plug in, the sys port, and make sure your transmitter is on. Next, it depends if you're using a DSM-2 or a DSM-X satellite. With the DSM-2, hold the button down as you power it up. The light on the satellite will light up and flash as well as the N light. With a DSM-X light, you don't hold the button, just power it up, the satellite will flash as well as the H light on the micro beast. Then you just initiate the bind procedure on the transmitter. Binding. DSMX 22 milliseconds. When that's complete, bind complete. Power off the micro beast and remove the bind plug. The last thing before we get to the 14 main settings A to N is the receiver setup. This is where the micro beast detects the receiver type and you can confirm it's the correct one. To do this, start with your micro beast powered off. Turn on your transmitter, then press and hold the micro beast button before powering it up. Keep the button pressed until the LED lights are cycling up and down. When you release the button, LED A should start flashing. Press the button briefly and the status LED shows your receiver type. There's different colours for different firmware versions so make sure you have the correct manual or reference card. On mine, version 5.1, which is as we know is the same as version 5.0, shows the LED off which means it's the Spectrum or JR satellite which is correct. When it has detected the receiver type, 
the light changes to the B light. This is where you could adjust the function assignment presets. You'll probably want to keep the defaults so aileron is aileron, elevator is elevator, etc. So just press and hold the button for two seconds. If you want to change anything, go to wiki.beastx.com to see the detailed instructions. After you release the button, the B light goes out and the N light lights up. Make sure your throttle stick is at the lowest position to teach the microbeast the fail safe position, then briefly press the button. This will ensure the microbeast cuts the power if you lose the connection between transmitter and receiver and your heli won't fly off, it'll just crash. When you push the button after setting the throttle failsafe, all receiver settings are stored. All the LEDs will flash a few times, then the microbeast will reboot after 3 seconds. Now we're finally ready for setup menu points A to N. So when you finish the receiver menu, or when you power it up another time afresh, you enter the setup menu. If you're starting from a new power up, wait for it to finish initialization, showing the firmware version and the lights going up and down, and then the status light will be steady blue or purple. Now to enter the setup menu, press and hold the button. The A light starts flashing, then stops flashing. Only when it stops flashing should you release the button. If you release the button while the A light is flashing, you will enter the parameter menu. So setup menu A, device orientation as mentioned earlier. The status light shows the orientation, check the colour and pictures here. Mine is solid red, meaning servo ports at the back and white port on the left. To change it, move the rudder stick until it shows correctly. When yours is correct, press the button to move to setup menu B. Menus B, C and D are very simple and you can go through them pretty quickly. First find your servo from the servo list on wiki.beastx.com. Mine are DS450s which mean at B, C and D respectively I need 200 Hz, 1520 microseconds and 333 Hz. So at menu point B I'll make sure the status LED is solid blue then press the button. At menu C I'll make sure it's solid blue again then press the button to go to D. At D I'm looking for flashing blue. Again to change any of these just move the rudder stick left or right before pressing the button. Set up menu point E, the tail servo limit. Plug the tail servo lead into channel 4 on the microbeast. Now check the rudder servo arm forms a 90 degree angle with the tail linkage rod and that gives you the correct tail geometry i.e. a few degrees of pitch to counteract the main blade's torque. To set the limits, push the rudder stick to the right until you hear the servo binding, then quickly tap it left a few times until it stops. A few seconds after you release the stick, the position will be saved and the status light flashes, then goes solid, blue or red. Then you do the same in the other direction, move the rudder left until it binds, then back off a bit until it stops. Now after a few seconds, the status light goes purple when both sides are done. When done correctly and out of the setup, it should look and sound like this. Left, no binding. Right, no binding. So when you're done, press the button to go to F. At setup menu point F, we are checking the rudder direction. So if you're looking at the tail from behind, when you move the rudder stick to the right, the trailing edges of the tail blade should go to the right too. If yours moves in the wrong direction, then go to the servo reverse page in your transmitter and reverse it there. Once you have set the correct rudder direction on the transmitter, you set it on the microbeast. It must be done in this order. When you move the rudder to the right, the status light must be flashing or solid blue. When you move it left, it should be flashing or solid red. If yours is wrong, Tap the aileron stick to swap it over. An optional but easy step to improve the tail is to get the red and blue lights to be solid and not flashing. To do this, increase the rudder travel on your transmitter just enough to make it stop flashing. Now you guessed it, press the button to go to G. Set up menu point G, swashplate mixing type. Firstly, don't confuse this with a swashplate setting in your transmitter. In your transmitter, it must be set to normal so the transmitter isn't doing any mixing. Find your servo layout here and note the colour required on the status light. Select with the rudder stick as usual. Now connect your servo leads as shown. Channel 1 is always at the back. Channel 2 is always on the left. Channel 3 is on the right unless you're doing mechanical mixing. If you're using 90 degree 4 servo setup, the first servo goes to channel 7. Setup menu point H, swash plate servo trim. This is basically setting the servo neutral position to center so the servo arms are at 90 degrees with the linkage rods. In other words, they're horizontal. 
Use the aileron stick to select the servo you want to adjust. Status like purple is the rear servo. Status like red is the left servo. Status like blue is the right servo. Then use the rudder stick to adjust the servo until it's as perfect as you can get it. The new position is saved automatically. Once you've set the servos, set all the linkage rods so the main blades have zero pitch with a swash centered vertically and level horizontally. I'm not going into leveling the swash in detail now as this video is already quite long and it's mainly specifically about the MicroBeast Plus settings, but you can take the rotor head off and slide the leveling tool down the shaft to check it's exactly level visually. When you're done, press the button to go to I. Setup menu point I, swash plate servo directions. Here, we're checking all the servos move in the same direction when collective is used. We can also make sure the collective moves in the correct direction now instead of reversing pitch in the transmitter later. So move the collective up and down. If all the servos move in the same direction and the blade pitch increases when you move the stick up, you're done. If you need to change a servo direction, it's the same as the setup menu point H. The aileron stick sets the servo, rear is purple, left is red and right is blue. Once selected, just tap the rudder to switch direction until all servos are working together and in the correct direction. Setup menu point J, swashplate servo throw. This is to calibrate the MicroBeast's reference so it knows how far to move the servos when controlling the helicopter. To do this, align the blades along the longitudinal axis like this. Put your pitch gauge on one of the blades and tap the aileron stick to make the blades go to the reference position. Then use the rudder stick to set the blade to exactly plus or minus six degrees. It doesn't matter if it's plus or minus for now, it just has to be plus or minus six degrees. The status light should ideally be blue here. Red is okay, but if it's purple, you will want to make some rotor head changes. See the full manual for more details. Set up point K, collective pitch. This step is made up of three other steps. First, the internal direction. Move the collective stick to maximum positive and leave it there. The status light should be blue. If it's red, tap the aileron stick to change it to blue. Second, set the end points. The status light should be solid blue, not flashing. If it's flashing, go to the travel page on your transmitter and increase the travel on the positive pitch just enough for it to be solid. Third, set the maximum positive collective pitch. Use the rudder to set exactly positive 12 degrees. When you've done that, do it all for negative pitch. Collective fully down, status light should be red. Set the negative end point then set negative 12 degrees exactly. Set up menu point L, swash plate servo limit. Here we're looking for binding and travel in all stick directions. This can be an absolute headache, but this is what you do. Move the collective fully up, then carefully move the sight click to all corners, watching the status light and listening for binding. The purple status light is not okay, red is just okay, and blue is perfect. If you hear some binding, reduce the travel with the rudder. Binding a bit, backing off, still red, that's okay. If the light is purple, increase travel as much as possible until it's at least red and ideally blue. Do the same with collective fully down. Move the collective to all eight points slowly, listening for binding and watching the status light for travel. This step can be tricky because at first mine was purple everywhere. If I increased travel it would bind, I had to just keep fiddling to get it okay in every direction. I can also get it to be blue everywhere but then it binds with forward cyclic, so I'll leave it at red with no binding. Set up menu point M, swash plate control direction. This is a quick and easy step with two smaller steps. First, check your swash plate directions are correct. Swash plate should tilt in the same direction as the cyclic. Forward cyclic tilts the swash forwards, left tilts left, right to the right, and back tilts the swash to the back. If any of these are wrong, go to the reverse page on your transmitter and reverse if needed. I already reversed my ailerons as they were backwards. Now the second part, set the internal direction. Hold the cyclic forward and right, tap the rudder until the status light is blue. Set up menu point N, internal head speed governor. I'm not using governor, so I just need to make sure the status light is off. That's the setup done. I'll quickly mention the parameter menu. This is a whole other menu that lets you adjust the flight characteristics of the helicopter. To enter, after initialization, press and hold the button but release while it's flashing. Then you get to access all of these functions. I won't talk through all of them now but there's lots to play with. The defaults have an asterisk. 